Goat Man's Bridge is said to be plagued by restless spirits, satanic occultists, and even windows to another realm. What is it that makes Goat Man's Bridge so deeply creepy? Constructed in 1884, the old Alton Bridge was intended to accommodate the growing horse traffic between the cities of Denton and Copper Canyon, Texas. Decades later, as commerce flourished in the area, Fortune favored a black goat farmer by the name of Oscar Washburn. Washburn's reputation as an honest, hard-working businessman secured his family's goat farm as a staple of the community. With his goat farm positioned just a bit north of the bridge, Washburn proudly erected a sign nearby reading, This way to the goat man. But not all of the townsfolk appreciated the financial success of a black man, and some even sought to target Washburn and his family as an outlet for their hate. The newly formed Ku Klux Klan was active in the region, and attacks on black Americans were increasingly common at the time. Washburn's goats were known for their high quality products, and likely enviable to violent racists who would be deeply offended by his honest work. One sweltering summer night in August 1938, Oscar Washburn was out in his field, tending to his goats. As the legend goes, clansmen in the local government approached Washburn, kidnapped him, and brought him to the old Alton Bridge. It was there, over the side of the bridge, that the men lynched Washburn. The murderers then traveled to Washburn's ranch house, where they expected to find his family. Some versions state that all the murderers found, however, was an empty home. Others believe the KKK may have returned to see the victim's family there, brutally annihilating Washburn's wife and children as well. After waiting for some time, the clansmen gave up and decided to return to the site of their lynching. What they found horrified them. The noose they had left now swung empty in the wind, with Oscar Washburn's body nowhere in sight. Unable to explain the body's disappearance, the murderers panicked and fled. There have been repeated rumors of hauntings and paranormal sightings ever since then. Most stories paint Washburn as the vindictive ghost. It has also been rumored that the ghost of Washburn's wife haunts the area, mourning and looking for her family. As if Washburn's story were not tragic enough, there is another possible source for the ghostly goat man. In the early 1860s, even before the clan officially came into being, a runaway slave was murdered in the exact same area. The Creole goat herder named Jack Kendall is said to have been hanged by Copper Canyon cowboys from a tree where the bridge was later built. Supposedly, they decapitated his body, which then reanimated and ripped off a nearby goat's head to wear on his body while Kendall's head still hung in the noose. The terrified slavers blamed the vengeful reanimation on voodoo, and the rest of the legend remains lost to those who were witness to such horrors. Just a few decades later, Oscar Washburn's reputation as the Goat Man and subsequent murder is solidified in Texas word of mouth. As details of the grisly murder of Washburn spread throughout the following season, the bridge became a source of great apprehension for the locals. Pedestrians crossing the bridge would frequently report feeling a hand grabbing at their arm, only to turn and see no one walking beside them. Nighttime saw the occasional sighting of a tall, 
spectral figure watching on from the opposite side of the bridge with glowing red eyes. Was this ghostly apparition, the goat man, revealing himself to passers-by? What did the goat man want from them? Why do similar reports of unexplained phenomena persist to this very day? While there are no records of these horrific tales, the sordid past of rural Texas leads one to easily believe within some version of these stories lies the truth. Did the original goat man feel the presence of history repeating itself and create the ghost of Washburn in his own image? Has the region the bridge was built upon always been a well of negativity and evil? Sometimes evil is drawn to a place for a reason, and perhaps the murders and consequent trauma to this specific place have cursed it for an eternity. As the decades passed and the cities of Denton and Copper Canyon grew, so did the demand for the automobile. As the old Alton Bridge was originally designed to support horse traffic, the width did not accommodate passing cars. Therefore, cars would have to cross one at a time. This tedious process was made even slower by something odd. Motor vehicles would frequently break down in the middle of the bridge. Car doors would lock and unlock on their own. Motorists could not explain this strange phenomenon, and eventually superstition motivated the cities of Denton and Copper Canyon to construct a new bridge on an alternative route. While this new bridge would be able to avoid any creepy mechanical hauntings, Goatman's Bridge would remain open to daring hikers by way of a dirt trail, where it remains open to this day. However, not all of today's visitors to Goatman's Bridge are innocent passers-by. The paranormal energy radiating from the site continues to attract those seeking to explore the mysteries of this world and beyond. It is said one can summon the goat man himself by simply knocking three times on the bridge. The mysterious significance of the number three is said to attract entities from other spiritual realms of existence, and curious, perhaps deeply foolish, passers-by continue to tempt the goat man. Despite the possible consequences, curiosity about the other side will bring those who will find the risk worthwhile, even to disturb that which might prefer to be left alone. The stories of the Goat Man do serve to remind us of the true monsters that exist in the world. The people who would do such harm to others by perpetuating a cycle of hatred and vengeance. If the Goat Man exists, provoking him is probably unwise. But for those who choose to visit the bridge and attempt to summon him, the ascending smell of rotting flesh and faint glow of red eyes growing brighter might make them wish they hadn't come at all. Is this sight a conduit for a power we do not understand? Is what we perceive to be the goat man in fact an entity attempting to reach out to us, to contact us? Rumors even persist of strange, occult activity occurring in the creek underneath the bridge. Whispers of cloaked strangers circled in the dank shadows below, performing bizarre, violent rituals. Are these occultists communing with the energy we know as the Goat Man? Popular ghost hunting groups have frequented the bridge, claiming to experience physical assaults while on the bridge, of hearing the half-man, half-goat growling to get off his bridge. Others have said they were even thrown into the water below by an unseen presence. To this day, 
strange encounters at the bridge are shared, making it a known hotspot for abnormal phenomena, from the fairly tame to the shockingly violent. Haunting stories keep coming. Startled eyewitness reports of the strange happenings continue to circulate online, keeping the legend of Goatman's Bridge alive. According to one frantic account from Reddit user Rick Ribera93, sincerely, fat bridge. I don't believe in God, let alone ghosts, but the goat man is real. Freshman year of college, I went there with some friends. We decided to meet in the parking area before the bridge. I get out of the truck and decided to mock the bridge by yelling and dancing to show how many f I didn't give about the stories. About 30 seconds in, I looked across the weeds in the river and I saw something red. It looked like a safety reflector, like the ones on bicycle wheels. But there was two of them. I'm not being metaphorical, but I was frozen in fear. For what felt like an eternity, I could not move. What looked like free-floating eyes glowed brighter red, and I was let go. I ran so fast back to the truck, and without question, we drove away. Last time I tried to go there with some friends, during the midday afternoon, there was an accident that was blocking the road. That's all the sign I need to not go back. Another Redditor, Melissa McCobb, writes, I had just heard stories from classmates back when I was in high school about how creepy the bridge was. But it wasn't until two or three days ago that I visited it for myself. The first night I was there, my brother and a friend of mine met up with a group of ghost hunters, and they told us the story of how the bridge became known as Goat Man's Bridge. While we were there, the group of ghost hunters decided to show us just how serious it all was. They grabbed a flashlight and placed it in the spot where Oscar Washburn was lynched and asked if he could show us all his presence by turning off the flashlight. To my amazement, the flashlight turned off. I was watching intently as the light started getting dimmer and dimmer until there was nothing but darkness. To me, the scariest part was when he asked if he was angry at the people who had murdered him and if he thought they should be brought to justice. Without hesitation, the flashlight came back on and seemed to be brighter than before. Last night, I was back at Goatman's Bridge and I decided to go prepared with my own flashlights and camera. We heard strange noises coming from the side of the bridge. We were alone, unlike the night before, so we knew it couldn't have been other people there. There are woods somewhere along the bridge and it is said Oscar has been seen there at night. Accounts vary, but the history of Goatman's Bridge continues to beat for anyone willing to reach out and feel its pulse. If you were to come across its weathered wooden planks, would you dare knock three times and await an answer from the Goatman?